There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's either full speed or off side. And so the light beams come down and they're reflected off, and we see when we look at this image, the candle is upside down. Right? So it's like when you go through the pupil, everything on the retina that you see is an upside down picture. And in your consciousness, you flip it around again. So scientists for years, through something called the dual slit experiment, found that as light goes through these dual slits, it creates a wave pattern on the screen behind it. A wave pattern shows that you get very intense bright areas, and then it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer down to dark areas, and then they'll get lighter and lighter and lighter until it gets bright, and then it'll go down again. And so they concluded that the photon, to do this, must have gone through both slits. They come up with this whole concept of non-locality in quantum physics that say the particle photon is going through both slits at the same time. That's how they get back to particle. Now, I'm losing some of you, I know. This is very difficult thoughts. But let's get back to the point that Steiner said that our concepts of the atom from 1900 1905 in the golden year of physics were wrong concepts and were allowing then electricity or allowing forces of evil to use electricity as carriers of their evil work. Does that make sense at least? Yeah. So when you say what we conceive of it, it's the way that we make it be the way that we generate electricity, or just how we understand it? How we sort understand of all it. of those, but it starts with how we understand it. But it, it, as it is now, it exists, even though we don't understand it right, it still exists. It always existed, yeah. you know, and since Lemurian times. Yes? Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to see if I'm right. with you. <laughs> it exists, but I remember a Think of these moments when you wake up and you're not quite sure where you are and things don't look right to you, you know, and you're struggling and all of a sudden a moment comes and you go, oh, oh, I'm at my grandmother's house or something, you know, and, and then the concepts and the percepts start clicking together and, and, you know, and then you're fine, okay. But there's this a little bit of anxiety in that moment when quite sure and, and so this connection of percepts and concepts is a very important thing. If the concept isn't right, then we're creating a false reality. When we create a false reality, we then allow for these other beings to use that to bring things into our lives. And I, that's where he's, he's coming from on this. So, um, one of the things that I, I was given in high school chemistry was they had this, and probably you've all seen it, there were, I think, something like eight of these heavy metal balls. And they were suspended from strings. And they said, this is electricity. Watch what happens. I'm going to pull this ball back and let it go. Mm -hmm. And it comes down and it hits the first ball. It's boom, the boom, boom, second boom, one. And the last ball flies out. Mm -hmm. Okay, So you get the pendulum with a whole collection of balls here. And it transfers that at a very rapid speed through all of them. So we say electricity is like that. And we shove an electron at one end of a copper wire and boom, 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 at the speed of light, and then pop, out comes an electron at the other end. 
how we want. Right. But the, the fact that we think like that is what makes the evil appear. Not the fact that it has it allows it to be a carrier yeah. of evil. Right. But where does the evil come from? Like, is the evil coming from our thoughts or from some energy outside of us? So it's coming from some energy outside of us, but don't forget, we ourselves are good and evil. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Okay? So we ourselves allow these other beings to work through us to further their goal in evolution. So when kids are little, they look, they look at the sky and they look at nature and stuff like that, and they make up theories, and they're wrong. You know what I mean? Like they, they Are they wrong? Well, yeah, in, in a sense. And then they learn, right? And then they learn, and then they forget that they ever had a theory. You know, when they're three, they think one thing, and when they're five, they figure it out, right? And then when they're seven, it's different. So <coughs> none of it's really wrong. It's just that they're, it, you're, you don't know as much when you're, you haven't lived as much in the world when you're three as you do when you're. I've, I've sat in these parks with my grandchildren and I've heard parents explaining to their children how certain things work. Right. And I'm groaning to myself. Me too. <laughs> because the children have a much better explanation than the parents, but the parents tell them they're wrong and they give them a different explanation that's very materialistic. And I think the children's was correct. In That's some not respect. my point. My point is that okay, you sorry. live and learn. Yes. You and add, you, you refine your concepts. You refine your concepts. Yes. But it's not evil when you don't have the full concept. No, okay. no. Right? You need to live to learn to, to refine your concepts. Yeah. So this gets to a question, is science today science? Are they seeking the truth? Mm -hmm. Or is science today engineering? and seeking to make money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different, different concept, different Yeah, I would goal. say that we've leaned, we're never <laughs> all one or the other, because we have to be practical, but I would say we've gone way over to the side of engineering. Mm -hmm. when, when science needs to come up with a mathematical formula for what it is, there's some goodness in that, but at the same time, the reason why they need in their papers to put it the mathematical formulas is so we can engineer. What have they done? They create a model. What is a model? A model eliminates all the outliers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The outliers are what's telling us what really is wrong with the model, but we el eliminate them. We don't include them. What is the mathematics of electrical engineering? Maybe you don't know this, but there was mathematics that was developed before electrical engineering, and it was called imaginary numbers. Because people wondered, what if? And the idea of an imaginary number is that when I square this imaginary number, it's negative. It's not a positive. When you square two negative numbers, you get a positive. So minus two times minus two is four. So the idea here of this imaginary number was that when I square it, which is important when I'm doing areas or something like that, or velocities, um, I, I get a negative number. Okay, so. But just keep that in mind, imaginary numbers. When you think, when you hear what Steiner says about imagination, yes, Oh no, I was thinking about light again. How, in a way, um, you have to separate the light from the electricity because if you think of uh, an aura or mm -hmm. your bodies or uh, if we look at um, paintings where there is the light around uh, Jesus or mm -hmm. the saints. So I think there is an energetic light that doesn't have like anything to do with electricity. But, or also if you, uh, I did Kabbalah as well. The whole Kabbalah is based on receiving the light and all of that. So just when I saw what it's like, I just thought there's, you could do a whole lecture just on 
light in a, in a spiritual way, and then light is, you know, electricity. So, I want to take what Donna just said and make it even wider and more brighter. <laughs> um, and that is, we talked about willed thinking. When we achieve willed thinking, we glow. People often used to put it in comic books that the light bulb, you know, floating in this bubble above the head would go and turn on. Um, we know about this. And he also describes how when we think into our willing, there is a light that glows. So we had sort of two ways of becoming glowing beings. And so this begs the question, what is light? Mm -hmm. Is light what a laser does? Is this still light here after it's gone through a mirror, this reflection through a mirror? Is this light that's filtering in and landing here still light? Or has it become something else? So um, early scientists like Crookes called um, electricity a form of radiant matter because they couldn't conceive of it as being not matter. So they conceived it as something that glowed and we get them to um, uh, Edison and being able to create light bulbs. But we had, they found that in a evacuated, so you create a semi-vacuum in a glass tube, that you can get various gases to glow when and now I'm going to use the wrong concept, but I'm going to use the one that they used. A stream of electricity flowed through it, mm -hmm. flowed through the gas, that the gas would glow. We still have no idea. We just know the phenomena, but we have no idea. We haven't been able to link the phenomena and those percepts to a concept. Is that no? the same idea as uh, when Steiner talks about gravity? That gravity oh, isn't, uh-huh, uh-huh, yes, okay. Yes. Um, so, I'm going to tell you, I think that what we call light, we have lost what really light is. Light is invisible. You go into space, the only light you see is the one that's coming directly at you and touches your retina. You don't see light, it's invisible. What you see is illumination. And so when light comes into a sphere where there is forces, gravitational forces, light becomes something different. When light goes through a mirror, here, it's a different kind of light. How do we create a laser? We have a source of light and then all around it are mirrors, so all of the light in perfectly shaped, so the light will only go in one direction. And then it will be one color. And it probably doesn't like it. And if you look at all of, yes, that's a good point, maybe it doesn't like it. Um, because what does light want to do? It wants to spread out harmoniously in all directions. Mm -hmm. Scientists today, when they're doing studies on light, they're doing it on lasers, and lasers only because it's monochromatic, one color. When they try to deal with sunlight and their examinations, all hell breaks loose because it's, there's too many factors to deal with. And so it's too difficult to do. But I'm telling them they're not using light anymore. Also, I was going to say, Andrew, there's brilliant light that you can have your photo done by these Carillion cameras. Carillion? Carillion, yeah. Yes. That show right. your, the light around your I body. I don't know if you're coming up with some curling photography. But, um, <laughs> so 